We know you're still sleeping, but we know that we'll all be reunited in the colony that you built. happened to the ship. Whatever happened, it knocked us off course. Where's the captain? Everybody that was in charge of running this ship is dead. It all falls to us now. We have some of the most brilliant engineers and scientists chosen to build a colony from scratch on an alien planet. We're the furthest out anyone's ever been. Who could attack us? I've got bad news. I have only four days of water left. Life support warning. <gasps> there is no air left in the ship. If someone doesn't do this, our journey ends here. I've got to be honest. I really thought traveling faster than the speed of light was going to be a little more fun. Let's crank it up. Every single person matters. We're in a war for survival. Not everyone is going to make it. Boom, there you go. That was the trailer for Sci-Fi's The Ark. Season finale this Wednesday on Sci-Fi. It's your boy, Kuyo P. This is Nerds Rule the World. And as you see on the screen, I have some special guests. I'm so excited, so honored. Uh, to have Jonathan Glasner as well as Dean Devlin, the showrunners, sci-fi legends themselves. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to you guys today. How are you? Good. Great to be here. Excellent. So uh, first off, I got I just got to congratulate you. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we got awarded us fans to hear that season two uh, will be happening. Uh, so kudos to you both. Um, I think it's only appropriate to transition from that into this finale because everybody's going to win. <laughs> everybody's winning. Um, <laughs> that's the title of, uh, for this uh, finale. So again, congratulations to you both. Um, I know you're excited. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so to start off, um, I, I kind of like uh, want to avoid spoilers in a way um, and get the hype uh, up for this finale. I, I like to take it to where it all started, um, where the germ of an idea happened with you, Dean, uh, to now, you know, this reality of we're getting to this finale and we have a season two now on the way. Uh, can you tell me how this germ uh, started with you, Dean? Sure. I mean, it really began with a lunch I had with a, a, a dear friend of mine named Michael Wright. Uh, he had been the head of TNT when I did The Librarians and Leverage. And, and he and I were just talking about television shows we missed. And he said, you know, I really love these shows where you have a group of, of disparate people in a small contained spaceship uh, uh, dealing with life and death problems. And he goes, you know, I, we used to have shows like that. And and now they, they you know, they, they're very different. He goes, I, I miss the kind of shows we grew up on. And he goes, I, I'd love to see one, you know, he even said, I'd love to see one called The Ark, where these guys are stuck in the ship. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. I could, I just couldn't stop thinking about that. And I thought, you know, I've never gotten to do my spaceship show. And so I kept thinking, well, if I was going to do a spaceship show, what would be different about it? And then this idea came about, well, what if, what if every one of the leadership of, of the spaceship, all the people who knew how to run the ship, all the, all the, all the teachers, all the na navigation special, all the doctors, what if they all died in the opening scene? And suddenly all the workers, all the, everybody else had to be in charge. What would happen? And that became a really interesting way to walk into this. And when I started talking to Jonathan about it, he, he latched onto that too, because it suddenly gave us a, a different way to tell this story. You know, in, in, in other kinds of shows, you can do the scene where the guy goes to the he goes to the, the, the cemetery and he puts flowers on his ex-wife's on his dead wife's grave and it exposits character. You know, this is a kind of show where you don't have time for anything like that. You have to exposit the character by by how they deal with a crisis, that that's what exposes who they are. And the big question of our show is, can they become the best versions of themselves? in time to save humanity. Mm. And what made it so much fun, I, I think, is we don't have that 
that captain figure, that the guy who's practically a god who has saved the universe 15 times before the show, that we can go to and say, Captain, what do we do? Well, I'll tell you what we do. We have a bunch of people saying, <laughs> what do we do? I don't know. And they don't maybe agree with should, each other. Yeah, maybe we should try this. No, we shouldn't try that. I love that. And, and uh, I have to ask you, Dean, to bring aboard Jonathan. Uh, was this, this is, was like a match made in heaven. You know, we're talking sci-fi here, right? And the vehicle that you've been looking to do, get the Stargate guy. Uh -oh. Like, how did, how did this happen? <laughs> well, Jonathan and I worked together on a TV series called The Outpost. And uh, it was it was a thing where I had actually asked Jonathan just to just to kind of like, you know, mentor a little bit. And uh, uh, he went so way above and beyond what I had asked him to do. And, and he turned that show into really a fantastic series that I'm so, so proud of. So when I got the opportunity to do this, the first person I thought to ask was Jonathan. And I was like, you want to go to space with me? <laughs> and uh, I was really fortunate that he said yes. I love that. Um, so with, with shows like this, th this is like escapist for us. You know, th we, we like to think about the bigger, broader picture of things and escape our, our norms, right? Um, so I'm sure that's the same for you and, and figuring out where we're going as uh, a people. Um, was uh, looking at everything and how this kind of like came together, this kind of happened during the pandemic. Was, did, was, was that any influence on the show with, with the writing or anything like that? Well, I, it was for me, I, uh, you know, we came into it thinking, well, we could go two ways with the show. We could do the really dark, gritty, slow burn type uh, science fiction that there's a lot of right now and, and they're doing great work. But I said, you know, God, the world is so depressing right now. I want something that's light and uplifting and fun and just a roller coaster ride. And that's what that's what Dean wanted to do, too. So so that we went that route instead. And. and for you, Dean, as well, did, did when you're getting with Jonathan and everybody, uh, were any of those influences, or you just you are you've always had this sci-fi story in mind? Well, I think the thing is, again, we we wanted to write a love letter to the shows that we that, that we loved, the shows that made us want to be in this business in the first place, and you know, I, I, look, I can appreciate a really great dark and edgy sci-fi show that plays out over a long period of time, but I don't really want to go make one. <laughs> because then I got to live in that world for a year and a half or two years That's or three true. years. If you're picking, uh, I, I, I'll watch them, <laughs> but if I'm going to make a show, I want to have fun. And this show is a lot of fun. You know, you, you talked about escapist entertainment, you know, for most of my life, people look down upon escapist entertainment as, as though it's a, a lower art form. But you know, when you live through a pandemic and high inflation and weird political things going on in a war and, being able to escape for an hour a week is a really valuable thing. I mean, it may not be the same thing as these Emmy award winning profound shows, but it might even be more valuable. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do a show that for an hour a week, you forgot about trying to pay your rent. <laughs> you just got went into space with us and had a great time. Well, let me thank you as a fan for that and, and all of those contributions <laughs> because it has inspired me uh, with a lot of the work that I do. And uh, most recently, also, I want to give you a side note because I know my friend Sumali Montano is going to be watching this. Ah. I recently did the deal with her, um, uh, like I think I believe last Which year. Which we also shot in Serbia. Exactly. Um, so I want to give yeah. a shout out to you, Sumali, because I know you're going to be watching this. I got Dean right now. She's um, the best. With the... Uh, Filming in Serbia and, and getting, actually, I, let, let me rewind that back. Let me, before we get there, uh, in regards to representation, representation means a lot for me as a Filipino as well, Mabuhai, uh, Dean. Um, All right. Getting everybody Annoying. involved with this and, and <laughs> featured. What was that like? And why, and why was that so important for you both? For the, the representation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, neither of us think a whole lot about that. We... We, for example, when we were doing the casting, when we put the casting calls out, we said um, we would describe the character. And one thing we did not say in the description was this person is black or this person is Latino or, you know, whatever. We said everybody, bring in everybody. And the only thing we wanted to make sure was that we ended up with a diverse group, but we didn't intend to try to put, you know, one in one in the box. You know what I mean? So we just took the best actors. We didn't take oh, that person checks this box off. We took the people who fit the part the best and I think it worked out great. 
I, I, yeah, it was I, interesting. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dean. No, I was just going to say it was interesting. I, I was I, I was teaching a film class uh, a couple years ago, and I asked the students if diversity was important in the shows that they watched. And they all said 100 percent is super important. And I said, well, why is it important? And I was thinking they were going to talk about representation and all this stuff. And what they said to me was actually a better answer. They said, because it feels more modern. And you know what? For me. And more like the real world. Yeah. But for me as a Filipino, I, I want to be celebrated because of me, not just because I'm the token Filipino. You know what I mean? I want Completely. it to be, this is our world today. And our world has a lot of colors. And, 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 and let's see it. You know, but, uh, you know, we were talking about this the other day. You know, uh, uh, we have a, a, a gay character on the show, but we, we never sat and said, we need to have a gay character. We need to represent gay people. It's, we had a character and it would be great if that character was gay. It helped tell the story of that. So uh, it, it, it's, it's maybe not the politically correct thing to say, but I, I, we like having the diversity come out of it organically as opposed to, did we get this? Did we get that? Did we get this? Oh, I'm with you on that. Because uh, as, as an actor, as well as a writer, filmmaker as well, um, I feel like we, the, diver the, the diversity part gets forced a little bit and you have to play to a stereotype. And I've experienced that as both That's an actor right. and then creating the, the projects that I'm creating. So so thank you. And I just wanted to echo that with uh, what you're doing. <laughs> I think you're doing it brilliantly. Um, some of the uh, intricacies that are put into this uh uh, I, I'm only on episode three. I'll say that, um, but I will be binging this whole weekend to get ready for the finale. <laughs> um, so don't worry. I've already kind of read up a little bit. Uh, I, you introduced some new elements with clones that I thought was rather interesting. And it got highlighted uh, during some of the press uh, coming to this on how you kind of put that into the mix. Well, can you speak on that a little bit more than some of the stuff I read out there uh, and that kind of a character coming into this and how that kind of changed things in a way in the script and the storyline for you? Wow, there's so many there's so many uh, dimensions to that question. We went, we did the, we came up with the clone idea. Um, for one thing, it was sort of a way to to loosely explore some racism issues because um, uh, Reese's character is is you know a, a prejudice against clones because he's heard all these stories about clones that aren't some of which are true and some aren't. Um, there's that. There's also we wanted to have a character that had some abilities that other characters don't have. Um, so that hel also helped that. And it helped our murder mystery. <laughs> but I also so, think that there's a there's an overriding thing that, that Jonathan mentioned the other, the other day, which is that they don't want to just be alive. They want to live. And so that really brings to the question, what is life? What is human life? And a clone, you know, which we think of, you know, a lot of people when you say clone, they think of a robot but it, it's a human. It's just born differently. You know what I mean? It, and so that's why we even say that to some degree, it, it's not that di different from in vitro. Uh, and so it, again, exploring what is life? What is humanity? What, it, what is it to be alive? Yeah. She says, I'm a human just like you. I love that. I, I love just uh, of the conversations that have happened as a result of having, it's, it's why we love sci-fi shows because it begins these conversations and we get forward thinking. Um, to peel the back door a little bit on me a little bit, you know, I'm an actor filmmaker here in the DC area. I work at the Pentagon and I do a lot of, you know, forward thinking in regards to certain things. And so I'm curious for you both, creating a sci-fi show like this that explores, you know, the, these questions and, and figuring out answers, uh, the research you both do to figure out kind of the elements that you want to put in this um, and kind of how that, you know, made its way into this. If you can maybe highlight some of the things that you came across that made its way into uh, the writing on the show. Um, that's a that, it's an interesting question because we we I'm a I'm a science geek. I I read science magazines for fun, and so at at first I, I was um, struggling a little bit with the show because I wanted to put science, 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 but then you. you that hurts the story. It generally it starts to feel like a, uh, a science lesson instead of um, a show, you know, instead of a, a fun story. So where, so what we've ended up doing is wherever we can put real science in or real technology in, we do. Um, we have the advantage that the show's set only a hundred years from now. It's not thousands of years from now, so we can actually pull on some things that are actually in development now. For example, the the space suits are actual suits that are being developed at MIT. Um, 
And I mean, we're not using the real suits, but that's what they're based on. That would have been, that would have been cool to get the real suits. Um, and, um, but then other things, uh, the, the, the warp speed that we use, the FTL, the faster than light speed is based on a real theory that a lot of physicists think is the only way it can ever happen. Um, but on the other hand, we have things like, you know, we don't have zero gravity. If we had zero gravity, we'd be still shooting the pilot. Um, so we just kind of gloss over that a little bit. There's a device that gives us gravity. <laughs> um, so, it, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a balancing act. This, is, this show is about entertainment first, characters first, and then we try to be as truthful as we can with the science, but we're not a slave to it. Okay. I, I feel as, that. As I, someone once said, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's get to this finale without spoiling for the people that aren't caught up yet. But if you haven't caught up yet, everybody, make sure you head over to Peacock, head over to On Demand, binge uh, all this weekend like I will be uh, to get ready for this finale. And then we're going to get ready for season two. Um, so with that being said, did you already know your ending, like uh, from, a, and I'm also asking this as a writer, you know, did, did the ending come first for you? Uh, and then you kind of figured out the path to get to that ending uh, to just lead our way into celebrating this finale. Uh, Dean, uh, what, did you already have it in mind when you came up with the concept of, uh, of where we're heading to? It, it came about before <laughs> we started shooting in discussions with Jonathan as, because uh, again, we're trying to figure out, you know, what is the proper ending for this season, but also what keeps the show going. So uh, all of the, the twists and turns and, and, and story arcs, you know, Jonathan plotted all of that out with me in the very, very beginning. But the evolution changed of, of how we got to those plot points based on seeing the performances of our actors and where they were surprising and where they were bringing new and interesting things. And, you know, we, we were open to adjusting to that. But the bigger story points, yeah, we, we always knew where we wanted to go. I, I, as a writer, I, I think it's always good to know your ending and work backwards to it to make sure you've earned the ending that you want. Yeah, we knew in the broadest terms where we were going. We didn't know all the little details of what was going to happen, but we knew where we were going. Love it. All right. So real quick, lastly, season two. Again, congratulations to you both. My boo hi, Dean. <laughs> Um, Thank you. What, what are, uh, is there anything we can maybe toss without the, you know, we're all leading up to this finale, but any kind of like maybe glimmers yeah. we can say of what we can expect season, for a season two. Season two is a musical <laughs> and uh, we're going to wrap the entire, <laughs> take a real turn in season two. There's Why somebody not? singing. <laughs> Mark <No>. one. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, no, you know what? I, I, I it, 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 these characters have grown and they've changed, and they now have a whole new challenge, as you'll see uh, uh, in the finale. And seeing how these characters have evolved and how they face this new challenge is going to be the fun of the whole next season. I can't wait. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much both for your time. This is really, truly an honor. Uh, again, as a young actor, filmmaker, I, I've been inspired by all of your work, your body of work, they precede you. So when this opportunity became available, I was more than happy to, to talk to you both. So thank you both so much for your time. Everybody, thank you. Dean Devlin, Jonathan Glasner, check out the ARC season finale on Wednesday on Sci-Fi. You can catch up on Peacock uh, like I will be. And let's get ready for season two, y'all. So excited. Thank you both. Thank you. Bye. And just keep an eye on the chat for time. Awesome. Thank you, Chloe. I appreciate it. Hi. Hey, Beth, awesome. how are you? Hi, Dean. Hi, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to talk to you guys today. Likewise. 
Awesome. So uh, I'm going to count us in to, to lead us in because I'm going to insert the trailer right beforehand and then we'll go with our okay. conversation. Awesome. Again, okay. thank you. All right. Here we go. Everything's got mine. All right. Here we go. In a one, two, three.